So now in this video, we want to talk about what comes next. What happens once the viral genome has been delivered into the cytoplasm? And what comes next is that you want to express the various genes that are encoded in this viral RNA. And we've color-coded the RNA simply to indicate that there are individual genes. So the sequence of nucleotides that are found in this viral genome encode no fewer than 27 different proteins. So this, is, uh, this coronavirus RNA is actually what we call a plus-strand RNA, which means that it's ribosome-ready. What that means is that it's, it's just like messenger RNA in the sense that once it's in the cytoplasm of a eukaryotic cell, a ribosome will come along and bind to this RNA sequence and translate it into protein. So remember, this is our, this is our model of a ribosome, right? So it binds to the messenger RNA. The transfer RNAs are right in here. And if we had the messenger RNA here, the viral RNA, it would be going right under those tRNAs. Codon, anticodon interactions would happen. You'd deliver amino acids deep into the middle of this ribosome. And then coming out of the exit channel on the backside of the ribosome would be the new protein. So you have to imagine that the viral RNA then is red, protein comes out here, so now let's, let's think about this new coronavirus protein that's being made. What you might have expected is that the ribosome might have started here and translated this gene into a protein. And then it might have started here and translated this gene into a protein and so forth. But that's not the way this virus has evolved to do things. This virus does something very interesting at least for the first half of this genome. For the first half of the genome, it binds here at the five prime end of the viral RNA, and it starts making protein. And when it gets right here, it keeps making protein. So it fuses this protein to this protein, that is the, the protein encoded by this gene with the protein encoded by this gene, it produces a polyprotein that can have up to 10 or 11 individual proteins in it. So this is the genome. Let's imagine this is the protein that's coming out of the backside of this ribosome. So new amino acids are being added here in the center of this ribosome. So here it comes out. And then very soon after this protein emerges from the ribosome, it starts to fold into these compact three-dimensional structures of each protein. So what you end up with in coronavirus is a polyprotein. Many, many proteins hooked together through just a continuation of uh, the amino acids joined by peptide bonds. So the incredible part of this story, remember I said that coronavirus is complicated. So it has evolved a mechanism in which one of the proteins involved in this polyprotein is a protein called the main protease. It's a protein that can recognize a particular sequence of amino acids in a protein and it can cut, it can cleave the peptide bond that joins the amino acids together. So there's a, there's a main protease present in this polyprotein. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors here. The amazing thing is that this main protease has the ability to cut itself out of this polyprotein. So it's going to recognize a particular sequence of amino acids right here. It's going to bind that sequence of amino acids in its active site, and it's going to cut. It's going to cleave the peptide bond right there. And then it's going to do the same thing on the other side. And in so doing, you have now liberated or processed from that polyprotein the individual main protease protein. Being a protease, it can then come back and it can recognize that same sequence of amino acids here and cut out that protein and this protein come over here. So it cuts up the polyprotein into, as I said, I believe, 10 to 11 individual proteins. So that's a very 
clever mechanism. And we should stop for just a minute then and think about think about the science. Think about the story I've just told you and wonder for a minute about the fact that we can tell that story. And it's amazing to me that we're all focused on coronavirus right now. We want to know how this virus works. But we can now, at this moment in time, look back at the published scientific literature, and we can find papers that describe research projects in which someone, probably several labs around the world, have been interested in this question of how does, how does the coronavirus genome get expressed, what proteins are made, what's the process of that expression, and there is, there's evidence then. There, there's experiments have been done to provide the evidence in support of this story that I've just told you. So you really have to wonder about a graduate student, a postdoc, who first came up with an idea, a hypothesis, as to how this might happen in coronavirus, and then went about proving through an experiment that, in fact, the main protease was one of the proteins in this polyprotein, and that it was able to cut itself out and then process the other members of this polyprotein into the individual proteins, each one of which then plays a role in the replication cycle, the ability of this virus to create more and more virus particles which will bud off of the surface of this infected cell. So that's, that's the amazing part of molecular science, that we can know so much about something that we can't even directly see. Hi there, Mark here, a colleague of Dr. Tim Hermans. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other coronavirus resources available at www.3dmoleculardesigns.com slash scienceofcoronaviruses.htm including a paper modeling activity where you can create your own physical model of a coronavirus. We hope you enjoy, and thanks.